Welcome. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and CEO of BizHack Academy, and this is the Digital Marketing Masterclass Series. Uh, today, we have an amazing presentation by Ricardo Barris. Uh, he's going to be talking about seven strategies to light up your holiday marketing now. Uh, in two weeks from now, we're going to talk about the top five secrets to attract customers online from a marketing master. And then uh, we're going to wrap up this season and year of master classes for BizHack Live with the top 10 digital trends for 20, digital marketing trends for 2022. So as I said, today, we're all about your holiday marketing. Uh, I know it feels like Christmas is still a ways away, but the holidays are upon us, especially if you're a marketer. Uh, in fact, uh, if you haven't gotten started on your holiday marketing, you absolutely must and use today as the jumping off point for that. I wanted to first and foremost acknowledge our amazing partners, the Office of the Mayor of Miami-Dade County and the Strive 305 Initiative. And I wanted to announce uh, a brand new partner, uh, South Florida PBS has come on as our media sponsor uh, and they have the Health Channel, which is a health information service that they offer. I did want to give uh, a chance for our partner at the mayor's office, uh, Danilo Vargas, uh, to talk a little bit about the Strive 305 initiative. And uh, you can tell people a little bit about our big plans for 2022 as well, uh, Danilo. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Dan. It is a, a pleasure to be here with everybody. I am so excited and honored to be part of this amazing class with all these cool kids to learn about marketing. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Danilo Vargas. I'm the Small Business Innovation Manager in Mayor Danilo Levine Cava's Division of Innovation and Performance and the Office of Equity and Inclusion. And as Dan said, time is flying by and the holidays are here, basically the holiday season, which means more are just around the corner. So as part of Mayor Daniela Levine Cava's Strive 305 initiative, we wanted to make sure that all of you are ready to light up your sales this holiday season. That's why we we're partnered with Dan Gretsch and the distinguished award-winning BizHack team. We're so proud of that partnership to offer you this free live digital marketing master class series uh, so you can finish the year strong and lay the foundation for profitable growth in 2022. Um, it's an honor really to be working with this great team. And as part of the Strive 305 initiative, we are going to bring you this kind of world-class learning and training opportunities this is just the beginning, as Dan said, there's, there's a lot more to come in 2022, other opportunities to keep partnering and innovate new ways of delivering this great content to you all. So I'm really excited about that. Strike 305 is really focused on tackling five key areas. Number one, access to, your, to funding, the finances of your business, how can we make that easier? Creating a connection and a portal where you can get all the information in a single location, creating a network of incubators and co-working spaces that are accessible, that are affordable in everyone's neighborhood so you don't have to travel far. And also to create that sense of community in the ecosystem. We are one of the most entrepreneurial um, counties in the whole nation. And so how do we come together in a community? I encourage all of you to please stay in touch with the Strike 305 initiative from the mayor's office. There's two ways of doing that. The first is there's a huddle a Zoom call every Friday called the Small Business Morning Huddle. And it's every Friday at 10 a.m. And all you have to do to register, and I'll put it in the chat box, is go to Miami, miamidade.gov forward slash morning huddle. And number two, subscribe to the Strike 305 updates, and I'll put the link in the chat so you can do that. I want to thank you all for joining us. And I'll be right here with you, taking notes from our great teacher uh, and figure out a way to light up those holiday sales. So enjoy. Thank you so much, Dan. And thank you, Danilo. Um, so um, I just want to share a little bit more about BizHack before handing it over to uh, our amazing instructor, Ricardo. Uh, BizHack is all about business storytelling for small businesses. Um, you know, I myself am a former journalist uh, turned business storyteller, entrepreneur, and educator. And we have partnered not only with the Office of the Mayor, but with a ton of uh, of local community groups, um, including three of the largest uh, universities in the country to help spread the word of how to use digital marketing to make growing your business simpler. As a thank you guys for coming today to the session, you're gonna get 
a handout with key takeaways for about how to improve your holiday marketing. You'll get a link to a recording for today's webinar. You'll have an automatic registration for our upcoming masterclass sessions. So we like to say register once, come to them all. You'll also be getting information about our scholarship program for minority and women-owned businesses. And you're welcome to apply to that if you'd like to uh, take advantage of the more than $250,000 in scholarship funds that we've given out to minority and women-owned businesses. And in addition to the scholarships, a uh, scholarship application does include a free one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation with me uh, and an invitation to attend one of our paid classes. And with that, uh, I wanna hand it over to our masterclass instructor, Ricardo Barris, the CEO of Me Group. He's gonna be talking about seven strategies to light up your holiday marketing now. Ricardo, congratulations. Welcome back as one of our masterclass instructors. Thank you, thank you, Dan. And uh, all protocols observed, um, thanks to uh, those who were mentioned, the office of the mayor and um, of course, uh, what you guys are doing with uh, Strive 305. Let me know if you can hear me because I'm uh, I'm uh, making sure I'm trying to come in as good as possible. Great. So we, we want to talk about, and I'm going to be, I like to do walkthroughs. And if you were at my first session, you see that I like to sort of get in the weeds of things and show you how you can um, right away, as soon as this session is completed, you can start applying some of the things that we talk about. And I'm going to do a little of that and mix it up a little bit with some other um, slides that I've put together uh, for you. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and share and share my uh, my screen with you. Um, and so we can enter into uh, some some active things. So the first uh, thing here is just bring up my presentation. And let me know if you're seeing it, if you're seeing my uh, my screen. Uh, one of the first uh, strategies that we want to talk about uh, today is uh, testing your 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 current site. So as you know, we're trying to light up for the holidays. And what that means is that if you sell a product online, uh, if, if someone is uh, going to have to reach out to you via your site to make a sale or a transaction, then testing your site using Google uh, grow my store is is a big deal uh, and it's important to understand uh, what exactly is Google recommending and saying to you uh, when you would have done that so so we want to make sure that we are improving our websites so we want to identify different ways to improve the site we want to we want to analyze the customer experience relative to the others that are in the industry because one of the things that Google does, uh, very well is always giving you benchmark. It always tells you, according to your industry, this is where you are. And that should be something that you, you pay very special attention to as you try to level up with um, those who are in industry. And of course, it's also going to help you by offering you tailored recommendations for, uh, for, for improvement. So I'm actually just going to go live and I, I like to, to have participation. So I'd like volunteer one website, uh, e-commerce website that uh, you'd like for me to go in real quick and do uh, do a quick run on the um, Grow My Store uh, provided by, by, by Google, by Think with Google. So if you can just put your, uh, just a volunteer, uh, put your website inside uh, the chat for us uh, so I can take a quick look at it, and I'm going to use that. Uh, I'm going to bring my screen up. This is this is just very fresh because I like I like like I said I like to do walkthroughs. So I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to I'm going to bring up uh, Think with Google here um, to show you exactly what I mean. So I'm on Think with Google site. I'm not going to log in yet, but I'm going to go to Tools. As you see, uh, I have Tools here, and I'm going to go to Tools right here and it's gonna tell me grow my store. So I've got several tools here and I what I wanna do is to use the grow my store tool uh, to test uh, what's happening there. So uh, let me see if we got a site. Uh, so we've got a site, I'm gonna use the first one that we got which is Gringa Flan. So I'm supposing this is an e-commerce site and you sell, uh, you sell um, Flang online. So I'm gonna take your site, I'm gonna put it into uh, the URL space provided here by Google. And I'm going to just hit get started. 
And Google is going to do some work on just scanning the site and checking uh, a couple of things. And then it's going to come back with some, some info. But before we do that, it wants to know a couple of things. So if you can, uh, if you can facilitate uh, with me here, I'm going to ask uh, the young lady who, or the person, I'm sorry, Jessica, who is um, at the flying, tell us about the business. Do you sell online and in store if it's both, but I'm going to just go with, let's say I'm going to go with just um, online and in store. If that's the case, you can just respond, uh, respond yes. Um, if not, we'll just go to um, the online only. So you do both. So I'm going to select both here. And uh, Google is also going to be asking me to, to choose the industry. So what's the industry you're in? I, I, I love flying, so I'm sure that's in the food space. I'm going to select food and, uh, and, uh, and grocery. Um, this, is a, this is a match. I mean, if you, if you feel like it's in another space other than what's listed here, you can always select other. So I'm going to go ahead and go next. And um, the other question is, what platform, what e-commerce platform are you using, uh, Jessica? And she says Shopify. And I'm going to go and select uh, continue. And so Google is going to do some review uh, for me. So as Google is doing the review, they're looking at the site. And so they're pointing out some things in terms of, hey, these are some recommendations. So first you get an average score that Google says, well, the average score chosen in your industry is 50%. And you want to be able to see how your business performs um, among the, the, the industry, right? Based on the business, there's 73% of, uh, of US shoppers rely, rely on shipping in two days or less. So a part of lighting up your holiday is being able to clearly tell your customers that, We'll ship for free and we'll ship same day. We'll deliver to you by the end of day because that's good information for your customers because they want, they want what they want and they want it now. And so if you can, if you can provide that messaging, <clears throat> excuse me, on your website somewhere bold so that people can actually see it, that's going to help you to add more lights to your holiday, right? Also, based on the industry, you could see where Google is is saying, again, based on the industry. So you, you notice they keep referring to the industry. There's 61% of online food and shoppers in the US watch online video about the topic prior to making a purchase. So you got to put some flang videos up there. You got to show folks how you get deep into the making the flang uh, so that they can, their appetite and their taste bud can be fed before they even make an order because that's attractive. This is what Google is saying, hey, Let's go ahead and do some of that. 61% of the folks who are going to be purchasing, they want to watch a video. They want to watch this flag and they want to kind of taste it before they buy it. But you also have to tell them that, hey, you buy this today before 12 o'clock, you get it at five o'clock or you get it next day, et cetera. Um, and they also say 36% of offline shoppers research the product on their smartphone before purchasing, right? So talk about the flang, provide information uh, about the flang, you know, whatever you can share that will help people to understand the product. Because a part of lighting up your holiday is not just going to be with the folks that you've already served during the course of the year. Those are important people. Your best customers are the ones who have already purchased from you. But a big part of lighting up your holiday is going to be selling to strangers, folks who have not heard of you before, not experienced your product before. You need to be able to reel some of the, those folks in because they're actually out there searching for ideas, for opportunities uh, to spend money. And there's 16% of shoppers that triggered the start of their purchase by a promotion. So what's what kind of offer are you making uh, with your site? Are you offering, you know, I saw an offer earlier this morning, which was a two for one deal, right? You just saw Dan was just telling you that you registered one time for this master series. You don't have to register again because you're all in, in all three. You need to be able to offer these kinds of uh, 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 irresistible things so that you can, bring, you can bring your customers in. And this is not even the report. While the report is being generated, Google is just sharing some tips with you. Um, and that's something that you should consider and see how much you can look at these things. Now, I'm not going to uh, generate this. This report is, is, is taking a minute, but I do have a report that we've generated for another site. 
Uh, but uh, Jessica, you can do exactly what I just did, sign into Google and Google will make that report available for you. If you don't have that uh, hands in the weed in touching things on your website, you go ahead and forward that information to your web developer or your marketing person and say, take a look at this report that Google is uh, sharing with me. Uh, these are the suggestions. So this is what the report looks like. So uh, we've pulled something up for one e-commerce website and it says, well, hey, you've got an advanced score based on the industry average of your site. And this is how we break down the results. So, so, so they're going to break these results down based on product information, personalization, the flexibility of the fulfillment, the customer service, the security, the mobile, and all of these components are key to lighting up your holidays. And so Google is going to be explaining to you and giving you a check, uh, a check mark. Hey, product details, you're looking good. Your products are clearly listed. It's described well on your site. You've got some reviews. You've got folks who are giving you five-star reviews. So you've got to like, okay, I don't have any reviews. Well, now is the time to really reach out to some of your most trusted and loyal customers and say, hey, we need your help. We've got to get some reviews in. We've got to get some five stars because this is a part of the social proof, which we're going to talk about shortly, that you need to really reel these strangers in, right? Product search, are people able to kind of search for your products? Now, if you have several products on your store or on your website, you want to provide that opportunity for people to search for something that they'd want. Product prices. So Google is giving you these checklists and these markers to say, hey, wish list favorite, for example, in this site, they're saying, hey, you know, if you, you're going to want to have wish list or allow people to add stuff to their wish list or favorite your product, because this is a key thing, um, you need to probably make this available on your site. So Google is, is pointing out these things. Flexible fulfillment. Google is saying, well, hey, you've got basket. It's a big basket. Folks can throw things in there. But have you talked to them about next day delivery or free returns? anything like that that's really um, appropriate for the product that you are selling, you need to be able to share those with, uh, with your customers. And also multiple payment methods. How many options for payment are you giving your customers when they get to the checkout? Are you allowing them to pay with Apple Pay? Because folks have you know Apple phone and they wanna just be able to click one click and pay with the Apple Pay. Are you allowing them to pay with PayPal or their credit card? Anything that's easy. So providing multiple payment methods for them, that's actually going to help to increase that conversion. Because someone who, if you only have PayPal on there and somebody doesn't like PayPal because yesterday they had a problem with PayPal, then you have a problem. You just lost that customer. So you want to make sure that you have several options there for them to be able to pay. So get on with those options and take as many of those options as possible. The customer service, you know, this is, you have a phone on, on the site, on your site, can people ring you? What about a live chat? Do you have any live chat there? Can someone reach out to you there as well or return, maybe a return policy option where, you know, we can talk about like, if it doesn't fix, you can return it. I was in uh, Target a couple of days ago and, and, and it was very interesting because what the, the gentleman who was helping me says, you know, you could take it, you can return it in 30 days if it doesn't work for you. I'm like, okay, that's comforting to know. So he's really trying to make that, make sure that I understand and get that message while I'm thinking about purchase. That also needs to happen on your website. The social media connection, the security, make sure your website has HTTPS on there because the browsers that your customers are finding your sites on sometimes will say the site's not safe and don't encourage them to browse your site. So if you don't have SSL on your website that brings the HTTPS protocol in the URL, ensure and if you're looking at my if you're looking at my uh, my screen, you see my mouse going over on the top left here is a padlock. There's a padlock beside the URL. Your site, if you're selling anything online, if you have any site online at all, you should ensure that you've got a padlock up here that says, "Hey, this connection is secured," because uh, the browsers will tell your users that this is an unsecured connection, and they don't recommend that they browse it. So that's something that you have to get with. And then there's a mobile. You know, how is it uh, mobile friendly? Is folks able to browse on your mobile? Keep in mind that right now, almost eight out of 10 customers are browsing on the mobile phone. And so you really want to ensure that your site is mobile friendly. So that's strategy number one. 
Um, and we want to jump into the next uh, the next strategy. So I, I did look at Grow My Store, and I hope that was helpful for uh, for you um, for you, Jessica. Uh, and you know, I'm sorry we can't try the other sites, but if you do exactly what I just did, you will get the same the same result. So it's pretty much a ones and zeros, right? So you're not going to get anything different from what I did. So you do that for your own site as well. So strategy number two uh, we want to talk about is social proof. So, so what is what is social proof? And 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 social proof, uh, social proof is like it says. If you look at the photos here, you know it's it's really what uh, what other people are saying about uh, your, your brand. What what's the reaction psychologically? For, for your brand. So you, you see the folks at the club, you you imagine going out to the club. And I know in Miami, we, we're big clubbers. We love to dance. We love to go out. And part of the attraction is that line and that crowd that you get the sense that the vibe is going to be hot in this space. And so you got to go in there. That's, a, that's an example of social proof. And so people are actually making um, those statements for you. You, your reviews on your website, you know, the five star, the star rating. These are things that other people are actually doing. So you are you are not speaking about yourself. You're letting other people do it for you. And so it can have an enormous impact on your bottom line. And we're talking about lighting up for the holiday, right? Keep in mind that there are six to six percent of the customers who are more likely to purchase a product from you that include a, included a social proof in the sales message, something someone else is saying about that product. Jessica just bought a, a case of Flang from Miami. It's like, whoa, this is amazing. Maybe we should check this out. And if you can implement those kinds of stuff on your site, in your communication, that's going to be brilliant. 82% of customers we're more likely to purchase product with positive star rating. Get those loyal customers that you've served in the last quarter, in the, in the set of quarters this year, reach out to them. I would get on the phone with them, send them a personal email, say, hey, you know, we'd love to get a star rating. Like we know you're a lover of the product. Give us a star rating, do an incentive, do a promotion, do something to get those star ratings up because that's going to help you uh, with social proof. And there's 86% of customers who are, who are more likely to purchase because they're purchasing a product from a company with positive star rating on their home page. So don't hide the star ratings. If you're getting these Google ratings, integrate the Google ratings on your homepage. You know, allow your web de developer, your marketing person, put a section on your, your homepage that talks about the stars that you're getting, the reviews that you're getting, what people are saying about, about your products. That's super important. So here's a tool that you can also use because I love to share tools. And this tool is called Social Prove with a V, socialproof.com. And as you see here, one of the things that Social Proof is doing is actually showing you uh, what other people are doing on your site. So it says, hey, you know, 70 people viewed this page today. What kind of psychological implication do you think that has when the numbers are big enough, two, three digit numbers to say, hey, 300 people was viewing this product. That actually helps to increase your, your conversion rate. So make a note of this. Go ahead and check it out. I mean, we don't have enough time to go browse these for you, but these are good sources that you should, you should really lean into right after this conversation um, and see how best this could be something that you could use for yourself. Um, I have to say, of course, some of these are completely free. Some of them are freemium, meaning you will get a few days to try it, and then you will have to decide if you want to buy it after. I mean, that's a, that's a good way to, uh, to, to, to test the, the, the opportunity. I mean, I wish flangs were like that, but, you know, you buy the flang, you got to eat it up. So thank God I know uh, what the flangs are like, and that's why I have to depend on what people are saying about the flang so that I can make a shot at it, right? But this might not be you. It might be somebody else who's got to do a test, do a trial before you're going to buy. So these are some other tools. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with them. They are actually on your handout, on the handouts that we're going to be giving you. So you will, you don't have to, you don't have to worry. You will have them and the links, and you can go in and take a look at them. And the reason we are sharing multiple of them is that you all have different businesses, and even though they're all e-commerce, sometimes you're selling. You know, like Jessica sells food, somebody might be selling clothing, etc. Take a look and see what's appropriate for your type of business. And we're not saying that you should 
you, you, you have to use the same thing. Like you can investigate for yourself and take a look. So I would right after this call, I would take a look and see, you know, which one of these are applicable to the kind of business that I'm in and implement them as soon as, uh, as possible. Strategy number three, we got to improve that product page. That product page where people are spending time to look at the product, we've got to make sure that we're improving that. And so there are some five things that I want you to note uh, uh, that you can actually improve. The first one is the basic product info for SEO. What's the title for your, for your product page? Like, how are you naming that product that you're selling, right? Um, how are you structuring that title? And you see the example that I have at the bottom here, uh, Best Buy. So some of these places that you can look at and benchmark, they have some of the most amazing basic product info. Best Buy, Walmart, Amazon. You look at some of the products, go and click on the product and look at the product page. Look at how they're describing the products and take clues from the structure and see how you can implement it in yours. That great title, it needs to have a great title. And you need to put yourself in the mind of your customer as you're thinking about that great title. So the flang, if it's if it's got strawberry in there, maybe, maybe I wanna put strawberry in the title. Uh, if it's from Cuba, maybe I wanna put that there. So you wanna make sure that you're putting in as, as, as much information as you possibly can. Don't sweat it, but do it as strategic as possible. Unique description, inviting meta description. The meta description is the, description that you see uh, below the title here. So this is the title in, uh, uh, as you're seeing on my screen, iRobot-Roomba i7 Wi-Fi connected robot vacuum charcoal. That's the title. You need a great title like that. And then you need a, a meta description that's going to talk about what exactly the product is or does, right? And so you want to add structure for the product and get, get rich results. And so less is more, but you want to be strategic about it, right? Uh, so here's one way that you can test to see uh, what is Google's feedback on, um, what is Google's feedback on a rich uh, test result? Like what if I put, what if I put my URL of my product inside this, uh, this test result, this test tool, and see exactly what it comes back. So it, the, rich, the, the rich results, what are rich results are the, this is the experience that, uh, that Google surfaces when people are browsing. So, so, so when someone searches, the result that they get from, uh, from the search, um, this, this goes beyond, you know, beyond that blue link you'll see on the search result when you go to Google and your search, right? So it's about, you know, images, it's about other non-textual elements. So you, you want to go ahead and test your, test, test your own product URLs, right? And see exactly what Google is actually saying about how you have structured that. And so when it, if it's rich, Google is saying that this is great because as we're crawling the site, we think that we can share this with someone who is searching uh, for this kind of a product. And that's, that's a big thing if you're selling products online. So, so go ahead and do that, um, that, that test and see what Google's feedback is about this, uh, rich, um, this rich result tool. So search.google.com slash test slash rich dash results. You'll get the exact same thing that you see on my screen. And you just need to put copy and paste the URL of your product, not your website. Click on the product that you're selling. It will give you a URL. Take that URL, put it in, the, in, in this area here and test it and see what Google says. Now, if you don't understand that information, we're saying talk to your web person, talk to your marketing person and say, hey, what is this saying to us and how can we actually improve this? Because Google is having a red X there. Or Google is saying something is not right. I need somebody to take a look at it. So don't freak out if you don't understand it. Whoever built your site, and I know a lot of folks on here build their own site as well, but, but if you don't understand the information or if you don't want to take the time to research to understand it, re reach out to someone who's got the ability uh, to help you. I think that's going to be really beneficial. Number three things that you can do, add real reviews, right? You want to add real reviews 93% of the U.S. customers check reviews before buying anything online. So they want to see what other people are saying about it. So 
make it intentional that every product you sell, find a way to infuse that conversation in there that ask, you know, hey, if you like the product, we're happy it got to you on time and we're happy you love it. Can you leave us a review? And you want to get as many of those as possible because, again, don't just take them, though. Put them on your site. Put them on that front page and let people see exactly what what others are saying about uh, those reviews. I've seen reviews on product pages as well. When people click on that product and they go to that product page, they see reviews of what other people are saying about that exact product. That's what you want to be able to do to light up that holiday uh, situation. Folks, you are late. Let me just say that again. You are late. It's November 3rd or 4th. Today's November 3rd, my bad. But you are late. Why do I say you're late? Because if you haven't, if you've got any issues or you haven't done any of these things now, like the moment you get off this webinar, you need to go run. Like you need to run like you're trying to catch a plane um, and you got to get these things done because you really, you really want to be able to light up this holiday. You got to move right now. Fourth piece is you got to make the product page lightning fast. Make the product page lightning fast and the customers don't like to wait. And, you know, or, or, uh, or attention span is around eight seconds and we don't like to wait for stuff. So if we're going to wait to wait for your product page to load or your site to load, that's going to be a joke. and We're just going to move on to the next thing. So you want to check that and ensure that if you're sending out a link via email, if you're sending out a link via your, 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 your paid advertisement, check those pages to see how fast they are. Um, so that you can definitely get on top of things. User test your product page as well. Get Google Analytics inside uh, your, your site. We're going to talk quickly about Google Analytics. But Google Analytics, uh, if you don't have Google Analytics on your website, if you don't know uh, whether or not it's there, please find that out today and get on with implementing Google Analytics on your site. It's going to talk to you about those folks who are visiting your site. It's going to give you information on the traffic. You want to know who the people are. You want to know where they're coming from. You want to know how much time they're spending on what page. You need this information in order to keep lighting up your, uh, your, 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 your holiday. You know what's funny about the Christmas tree? When we wrap the lights around it, one of the interesting things I see the kids do, they check the lights that are not working, the bulbs. They actually check the balls that are not working and they quickly go replace them. Google Analytics is almost like that little thing there. You got to check to see what's not working and what can we replace. We need to fix that right away because it's the holiday and the kids want that tree light up. They don't want any bulbs that's not working there. That's why they're working really hard to ensure that everything is working perfect. Google Analytics is going to help you to do that. Strategy number four, use chatbots. So chatbots are these little things that shows up at the corner, left-hand corner of the site, bottom, bottom right corner of, of most sites that you'll go on. You will see these chatbots there talking to you, and it's some, some, sometimes they're proactive. I call them proactive. Like you don't have to wake them up. The moment you land on the site, it's like, bloop, hello, how can we help you? Like, welcome. Would you like to try this, or would you like a 10% discount today? That's what... I really like to see happening for those who want to light up the holiday. You want to give people, don't let them click that chat bot, right? When you, when you go to a chat bot builder like HubSpot, which is one of the ones that we, we like, you want to make it proactive. Talk to the customer. Once, once they realize someone visiting this page, pop that chat bot right up and say, hello, you know, how can we help you? Work, work the customer because it's like the physical store, right? What the managers will say, the physical store, the retail store, is that, you know, the moment someone opens that door, <laughs> you got to greet them. You got to walk with them around and help them to make a decision because sometimes they're there window shopping, but they leave with something. And that's attributed to the customer service that they get when they enter the store. Same thing. When someone enters your website, the chat bot needs to be ready and willing to help that person being proactive. So try um, HubSpot Chatbot Builder. Um, this is also in your uh, handout, uh, but this is, a, this is one of those uh, builders that you can build and prepare. Now there are proactive chatbots, uh, which are really kind of live chatbots. And then there are those that are built to take popular questions. So 
Facebook Messenger, for example, is an ex- is is one, um, and you have some of the other ones that you can also do this in in uh, in uh, HubSpot, where you can pre-build the chat. So if you if you need to collect information, so for example, you know, hey, welcome to our site. You know, how can we help you today? You provide options. I'm looking for flang or I'm looking for this. And then when, when someone clicks it, it gives them another response. And that's basically you building that uh, sequences of chat that you want to have. And it seems like someone is there, but it's really a bot that's actually there talking to you. So you can get either one of those, even in your off time, you close at five or six, you let the chat builder, the chatbot builder work for you. And during the time when you are at the office or at the store, you can do the live chat and greet persons as they come. So these are some other recommended chat um, chatbot that you can um, that you can look at um, and again test them, see if they work for you. If they do work for you, implement them. The worst that can happen is that you change it to another one, right? But don't be afraid to test. You've got to test. You've got to be in that experimental mode because that's the only way that you're going to be able to. Uh, to enjoy the success that uh, your competition is enjoying, right? Uh, the strategy five, the abandoned carts, the, 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 the abandoned shopping carts. These are people who uh, went to your site, clicked on the product, add the product to the cart, boom, something came up and they have to run. They got a phone call. They had to step away, whatever the reasons, but they never finished the transaction. And if you don't, if you don't recognize uh, them, and if you don't follow up with them, you are going to be a part of the seventy percent of folks who, um, you know, suffer from abandoned carts. So, th- because the average, the average shopping cart abandonment rate can be as much as seventy percent, which is you don't want that to happen to you. Not in a season like this when you're looking for everybody who puts look, they put something in the cart. They are so close. You want to you want to be able to know when that actually happens and when they're when they've left it. This is huge, and this is where most of the small businesses don't uh, make uh, that kind of um, conversion or increase in their sales because they have nothing to track uh, what's happening when folks left uh, items in the cart. So there's a cart bounty, which is a a pretty cool tool that you can actually use and you can get that set up. Um, on your WordPress site to really help you. And it shoots out an email. It reminds people that, hey, you left something in the cart and it, it follows up with them. And uh, you can get a, a really nice double digit conversion rate just from that because sometimes people just forgot. Like I just went to my Amazon stuff because Amazon said, hey, you left four items in your cart this morning. Did you want to check those out before the day's out? And it's like, oh, that's pretty cool, right? And then just forgot. It's just it's it's just nothing, nothing personal. I just forgot, and this is happening to folks because people are busy out there. So get something like this set up on your site to track the abandoned um, items that's in your your shopping cart. These are some other tools that you can also look at. There are quite a few of them. Uh, if you use WordPress or if you use Shopify, there are a number of them that are in either of those platforms. Take a look and see which one works best for your kind of business, for your uh, for your store, and implement it right away so that you know and set up those emails to reach out to folks who uh, uh, would forget something in their cart. This is going to really, really help you. And I'm excited to hear about uh, in the new year how this kind of stuff has helped you because I'm telling you, the moment uh, we've got folks who install this, Within, within 15 days or so, they're getting a lot of uh, notifications coming through on abandoned carts because people do that every single time on almost every website. Now, the uh, coming up to the end of the strategies, the sixth strategy I want to talk about is engaging those customers early. And and you, you heard me talking about those live chat bots, but video calls is a new thing, right? Being able to chat with, uh, with the customers uh, over video because um, you know they always say people don't buy products they buy people and if someone can actually see you on video and chat with you and you know they like you that we're saying that hey 57 percent of customers feel way more comfortable in making a purchase after watching uh, watching video watching a product demo talking to someone on a video chat 
like that that is so helpful and we already know that most people are trying to get out in person now and some folks are still hesitant but having something like this available where people can kind of connect with you that's going to be super helpful to increase that conversion rate so acquire has a video call uh, system that you can look at and see if this video chat is something that's appropriate for your kind of business uh, for what you're actually doing um, and lean into it and try it and, and see how you can implement something like this to help to increase your your conversion uh, conversion rate folks all of these things are going to really light up your holiday but you the information is as good as what you do with it right so you've got to you've got to be very very intentional after this webinar go 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 because you are late right you got to get going um, and get these things implemented. Talk to your web guy, talk to your marketing guy if you are not familiar with it. But they always say, close mouth, don't get fed. So, so you've got to open your mouth and talk about the challenges, have someone to give you some feedback and make it, uh, make it work, right? These are some other recommended engagement tools that you can use. I mean, you know, if you're on social media, use those engagement tools that's there, the, the, the messenger, the WhatsApp, see which one works and use those because the customers are coming in from different places and you want to ensure that you're meeting them where they are at. And so use those messaging platforms, you know, ask folks about uh, how how they they feel about purchase after purchasing your product. Did they like it? Like survey them, you know, the live chat that we talked about those are important, just being proactive on greeting customers when they visit your site, uh, you know, web analytics, co-browsing, right? Chat bots, like we talked about earlier, A-B testing your, a -B testing your, uh, your, 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 your pages to see what customer likes what. Um, the video calls that we talked about as well, email, and, um, and of course, providing some kind of a knowledge base. Again, it's not for... Every tool is not for everybody. It just depends on the kind of business that you're, uh, that you're in. But these are in the handouts. You can look into them more and see what's more appropriate for you. Lastly, imagine now you had a great holiday. You know, you, you had an increase in sales. Um, things went really well. Uh, but, you know, January is right there a couple of days away from that huge peak in the shopping, don't forget it. Because January is where a lot of folks who didn't get their way in December, they're now kind of uh, wanting to take advantage. So the parents who paid all the, the, the attention to the kids never got anything for themselves and they want to kind of look for stuff for themselves now, like this is, a, this is really helpful. So folks are interested in treating themselves. You know, they've treated everyone uh, you know, they might have gifted money, like, right? you know, on the Christmas tree, it was a gift card or these different uh, gifted items that they want to now go out and spend. Uh, you know, January is where they're probably going to spend it, right? Uh, six to 5% of shoppers, they make these in-person returns as well. And so when they bring back these items, they're looking for what other options that uh, are there that they can do the exchange, right? Um, and there are 75% of the, the purchases that ha actually happen, um, people purchase more than what they came for in the end. And so when they can come back with those items to return them, they're seeing other things that they'd like and they'd like to go ahead and purchase it. So the, 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 the lighting of the, the trees and the, the light up doesn't end, but you, know, you can really, really make it rain during this holiday season um, by thinking about these strategies and I really hope that uh, they were they were really helpful for you. Um, so, but prepare for the returns on the exchange if that's the business that uh, if your business you know does that. Uh, extend coupons and the gift card redemption, right? Those are things that will actually help you uh, in January as well. Take advantage of uh, you know store credits. You know if you can get store credits out. Uh, these days, folks are into, you know, buy now, pay later. You know, you can you can lean into that uh, because there are a lot of uh, payment processors and uh, payment handlers are doing buy now, pay later so that they can get uh, the shopping, the shopping in. So those are some cool tips that you can you can take advantage of. 
And so after all of this is uh, done, then, you know, you should really do an, an evaluation because you will be here next year as well. And, you know, you know, you will be here in the years to come and you want to be better every year, every season, right? What strategies were successful? And we always say, if it works, you know, you amplify it. And if it doesn't work, you modify it. But you got to, you got to check it to know whether or not it's working. What worked and what didn't, what will we do differently? So what are you going to do differently this time? As you look back in, uh, in last year, what would you do differently now? What's, what are you going to repeat, right? What product performed well? What are you keeping? What are you throwing away? And how can you improve those product performance? So the reflection is key uh, after the holiday. So think about, think about that and carve out some time to reflect on what actually happened and how you can uh, start working on not being late, but you are now early because people are planning for these things. I promise you, as soon as July ends, and and soon as the kids are back in school, then the holiday stuff starts happening. People are planning strategies and so forth. So you really want to use that as an opportunity. And here's a um, a prep checklist. I think it's, it's available in the handout. Uh, and you got it from July all the way to January. So you've got like a five-month window of some of the things that you can start doing. But lean into this holiday as hard and as aggressive as you can right after this call but when you take that reflective moment in January, take a look at this kind of a prep checklist and get yourself prepared to see how can we, whatever we did miss, how can we improve that in the coming year, which is 2022. So thank you very much. I, I really appreciate uh, you spending the time and hanging out with me. I hope you, uh, you learned um, a few things and you can take action. Again, you've got to take action in order uh, for you to be able to see the results. So your plane is, uh, is about to take off. You got to hurry and get this holiday situation sorted out right away. Thank you so much. Great work, Ricardo. And, um, you know, as I mentioned, guys, I want to just quickly share with you what the thank you gifts will be for today's presentation. Uh, I also wanted to encourage you with the time we have remaining to add questions into the Q&A box. If you look at the bottom, there's a box that says Q&A. Click on that, uh, add a question. Uh, we're gonna wrap up early if you don't have questions. So now's your chance. Uh, so that I mean you, uh, there are 50 of you here. We'd like to uh, get as many of your questions in as we have time for. So uh, just as a quick reminder, while we're giving you some time to formulate your questions, um, I did wanna, um, remind you that uh, today, uh, after the session, uh, you'll be getting an email with a handout with key takeaways uh, from uh, Ricardo's amazing presentation. You'll get a link to this recording. You won't get the actual presentation, though. Uh, you'll get automatic registration for the session we have in two weeks, the top five secrets to attract customers online from a master marketer. And uh, in, on December 1st, the top 10 digital marketing trends for 2022. You also get information about the uh, scholarship program that we offer for minority and women-owned businesses. You can go uh, now to apply if you're interested in learning more about that at bizhack.com slash apply dash now. And that scholarship application includes a free marketing consultation with me and an invitation to attend a free uh, training, one of our free tra uh, paid training classes. So um, really look forward to, to you guys uh, participating more with our masterclass series and, and uh, seeing you at our upcoming sessions. And uh, we have some uh, folks who uh, posted in the chat. Let's see. Are there any questions? Um, I'll share the link, Daniela Jean, uh, for the uh, scholarship application. Um, we just get a lot of thank yous and a lot of um, kudos. Uh, Danilo, you know this audience pretty well. Uh, I'd love to give you uh, a chance to ask a question that you think might be on some people's minds. They might be just a little bit um, shy to ask it. Sure, sure. Thank you, Dan. One of the things I saw in the, in the chat box was that, um, you know, we focused on e-commerce, but what if you are B2B or if you're selling a service? And I kind of commented there that I feel like it's a lot of overlap, but what do you guys think? 
Yeah, I mean, I definitely there are some overlaps. There are some of the tools that we mentioned here uh, are certainly um, uh, applicable to a B two B service oriented sort of business. Um, but you know, depending on what service you're providing, of course, if you're a doctor or if you're an attorney, like people still want to see reviews. People still want to see what other folks um, are saying about you. So those things are as applicable. Um, as possible. Now, of course, you may not be doing a transaction the way someone who's selling a product is doing a transaction, but take a look at some of the other strategies because there are seven strategies. And if you're B2B, chances are there are about like four or five of those strategies that you can go and work with right away as well. You know, all consultants, all service businesses need to have Google Analytics, need to be tracking the traffic and analyzing that. You know, you need to be setting up chat bots because the chat bots can really help when you are out of office or when you're not around, particularly if you're a boutique, one man sort of uh, business, set those up and put those kinds of answers that people are asking uh, the popular frequent questions and provide answers to them through the chat bot. Those things will definitely help. So I, I really think uh, that you can benefit uh, significantly if you're a B2B service person as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Ricardo. I think this is like um, the money in your pocket type information. Absolutely. And I see someone asked for my contact info. I don't know, Dan, if, uh, how do you share that? Yeah, please. Um, um, it'll be in the, in the handout that you get. We'll have his full contact information. Yeah. So keep, I keep an eye for that. And, and Ricardo, feel free to put it in the chat as well. Um, Ricardo runs a really fabulous agency. So whereas we, BizHack, are really dedicated to upskilling and training, um, we have partners like Ricardo who run agencies that service businesses like yours if you want someone to do it for you. Um, we're, we don't believe at BizHack that there's a difference between B2B or B2C uh, or even B2G. Yes, there are tactical differences. Um, it's all human to human. And we really focus on businesses that have some kind of sales process. So, you know, e-commerce um, is similar in that you need to give them a great customer experience, but it's different in that the sales process doesn't have a human touch. Um, at BizHack, we assume, and frankly, for most businesses, this is the case, that there is a human being on the other end uh, of the sales process. So it starts with digital marketing, and then it ends with some kind of sales process. And the reason why that's helpful is, you know, the difference between a pure sales driven organization and one that has some digital marketing is the digital marketing is touching people that you might have otherwise been, you know, cold calling. Uh, or you might not have even known them because they're strangers to you. So digital marketing is, I like to think of it as like a little army uh, of digital salespeople telling the world about who you are and what you do. And if you do a good job with digital marketing, they'll call you. And when they call you, they're much more likely to close. Nobody likes the cold call. Nobody likes to hear from someone they've never heard of. So in essence, for us, digital marketing or lead generation is really about letting the digital social media, website, landing page, advertisements do the walking for you rather than you going door to door the old fashioned way. That does not mean it can replace the human to human, belly to belly, face to face phone interaction that is really required for most sales processes, but it can definitely warm them up, get them to know what your values are, let them learn some of the basics about your products and services. But then in the end, you know, you need to make good on that through the sales process and then give them great customer service so that they come back, recommend others and buy more. Um, with that, uh, I want to say, uh, oh, we have uh, Adriana has asked, if we get reviews in Google and Facebook, how do we make website visitors aware of that? Great question. We'll end on that one. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, so you get the Google, you get Google reviews. There is a way to uh, show your Google reviews on your website homepage. And so uh, website visitors that are going to your site typically may go to your website homepage or may go to a specific page that you run a campaign to like a landing page or so or a product page. You can actually take that uh, Google review or that review from Facebook and actually show it inside, uh, inside those pages. So 
uh, there is actually a way to do that. So yes, that's definitely um, that's definitely possible. Uh, but again, talk to your uh, your your person uh, who is helping you and see how you can kind of mirror those. I saw something from Jessica is asking about quickly Dan about chatbots and um, and uh, and and the 24 hours if, if somebody is not there. So keep in mind that a chat bot is literally sort of a programmatic conversation that you would have already set up uh, in advance to speak to some of the more frequent queries from your customers. A live chat is when you are literally speaking to a live person that's really helping you uh, with an issue or serving you as a, as a customer, two different things. And, and they're, they're both appropriate. If you are not gonna be in the office, you can activate the chat bot to really help you out. If you are there or you have someone in support to help you, then you can do the live chat to really um, you know, interact with the persons right there. Uh, one of the key things about live chat is, is you ask for the person contact or even the chat bot, make sure you get that contact and say in the event, uh, you have experienced it, if you've ever called uh, a bank or if you ever call any institution like those, they ask you, you know, in, in, in the event we get disconnected, what's your name, what's your email address, or what's your number? If you have that, uh, you definitely can make magic, but, uh, you know, don't, don't end or don't continue without that kind of stuff. So stay. I always say to my folks, never forget this. Every customer that you interact with, you must give them an opportunity to stay connected. Let them choose not to connect. But if the opportunity is not given, you're missing out. So ensure that you're giving every single one that opportunity to stay connected with you. Wonderful. Thank you again so much, Ricardo, for this amazing information. You know, Danilo, let's just talk really quickly about 2022. Um, right now, we have planned uh, a continuation uh, of the Masterclass series. Uh, we are actively looking right now for community partners to help us spread the word to reach Danilo's ambitious and I believe achievable goal of touching 10,000 businesses in the next year and a half with the Strive 305. So my question to you is, are you with us? And if you are, write an email to me and Danilo. I'm at dgretch at bizhack.com. Danilo, uh, what's your email address? You'll put it in the chat. And we need your help. In order for us to touch 10,000 businesses over the next year or so, we need your help spreading the word about this amazing free training. Um, none of us uh, on the BizHack side are getting paid. This is a community service that we provide. We are looking for uh, funders to help us defray some of the costs of this, but BizHack has a long track record of doing this kind of work. We won national awards for more than 50 sessions that we provided during COVID called BizHack Live from the American Marketing Association PR and, and Reagan's PR Daily. We are dedicated to helping small businesses in whatever way we can upskill and survive the continuation of this pandemic and this crazy economy that we're living through right now. But we do need your help spreading the word to achieve our goals and ultimately trying to find sustainable funding so that we can make this something that we do now and long into the future. With that, I'll say thank you again to Strive 305, the office of the mayor, Daniela Levine Cava, for all that she does for businesses. Thanks also to our media sponsor, South Florida PBS, for helping us spread the word to their amazing audience. I'm a former NPR and PBS guy. I love having public media on our side. And with that, I'll say, get started on your holiday marketing. You might be too early to put up your Christmas lights, but it's not too early to put up your Christmas ad. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Take care, everyone.